in our relationship with the Holy Spirit. Dans notre rapport avec le Saint Esprit, and every fresh, every new level of relationship with the Holy Spirit will leave something in you. Chaque nouveau seuil de relation avec le Saint Esprit va laisser quelque chose en toi. Why new levels of relationship with the Holy Spirit? Pourquoi un nouveau seuil de relation avec le Saint Esprit? As we grow, pendant que nous grandissons, and as we embrace responsibility, et pendant que nous embrassons les responsabilités, our capacities are limited and, and become stretched. No capacity. On this 16 night of the crusade, the leader elaborated further on the subtopic introduced the night before. From encounters with the Holy Spirit, we have all the world needed for leadership. However, encounters go from one level to another because as our needs grow, we embrace new responsibilities. Our capacities become limited and we stretch. For instance, what you need to carry your family is not sufficient for you to carry a house church. Or what you need to be the leader of a city is not the same you need to carry a nation. All the endless riches we need at all levels are available in Christ Jesus through the Holy Spirit. To substantiate this truth, Brother Toto gave some vivid examples of men in the Bible who drew from the limitless provisions of the anointing with the Holy Spirit at every level of needs and responsibilities. David from a shepherd to a servant, a commander, a mayor, a king, became a national architect an engineer of quantity receiving straight from the finger of God. What about Joshua, a slave, a servant, a general, a leader of Israel, and finally an expert surveyor who carried out an original work? What about Joseph, a spoiled child, a slave, world manager, a prisoner, a prime minister, and finally an economic genius, yet who had no formal training? only the anointing of God. The leader continued in showing the immense, unimaginable and limitless potentials of the Holy Spirit. He explained that, be it for the judges, the prophets, the kings, the builders, deacons, leaders, elders, the leaders of Antioch, apostolic helpers, their power to minister resulted from an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Prophet Isaiah, for instance, was outstanding in his knowledge of cosmology, botany, and the geography of surrounding nations. What of Amos, the most illiterate of all the prophets, as he called himself, a farmer who had unusual knowledge of cosmology and Pleiades and constellations? Flesh and blood cannot serve the kingdom of God, the leader further emphasized. Moses, with his privileges and education in Egypt, tried, but ended up as a master fugitive. It is only after an encounter with the Spirit of God, where he received gifts to lead, that he could serve God. Similarly, after three and a half years of training at the feet of the Master, seeing his own model of life, the Apostles still remained quarrelous and self-centered, yet well-taught people. A way to say that teaching will never turn people away from their self-centeredness. It is only after they had received the Holy Spirit that they were capacitated to become witnesses. It is the encounter with the Holy Spirit that capacitates, and every encounter with the Holy Spirit transforms us and leaves something of God on us. It may be glory, power, or the presence of God. Brother Theodore then shared further on various forms of the believer's encounter with the Holy Spirit. First, the branding with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the seal of God on the believer. Second, the indwelling Holy Spirit, whom the leader describes as the bank teller of God who collects the checks of our prayer from the limitless riches of the grace in Christ Jesus and imparts them to our spirit so that we are strong in our spirits. And as we are strong in the Spirit, Jesus is made real in us and nothing is impossible to us because living the faith becomes easy. However, what quenches the indwelling Holy Spirit are the sins of the Spirit, including jealousy, 
bitterness, the leader commented. The Holy Spirit is also God dwelling in the church, his house made available to him through a matrix of relationships, a good relationship with God and a good relationship with one another. When these conditions are fulfilled, God comes in, dwells in, and moves around in his dwelling. From Ephesians chapter 5 verses 18 to 20, the leader further depicted what it looks like to be constantly filled with the Holy Spirit as you continually drink from the fountain of living waters. To be filled with the Holy Spirit is not first the manifestation of gifts, but the transformed personality. It is a personality that radiates with joy and positivity, a personality that is positive in interactions with others, a personality that easily relates with others. Lifting the veil further on the person of the Holy Spirit, the leader disclosed that there is an inner component and an outer component of the experience of the Holy Spirit. The inner component transforms our personality and includes being sealed, the indwelling spirit being continually filled, being full and being possessed by the spirit. The outer component is for service and it includes baptism with the Holy Spirit, clothing with power, punctual anointing, manifestations and demonstration of the spirit and being in the spirit. These two components have to be continually developed, the leader specified. Et ce n'est pas quelque chose qui finit une fois pendant une réunion des grandes excitations. C'est un, c'est des eaux profondes. On ne fait que plonger, plonger, plonger. 